everybody. Hey, hey, hey. So I am going to open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us here yet another Sunday here in April 2022. And we just thank you for your love and kindness. I'm asking that you decrease Thumbelina, get her out the room if you have to, so that you could increase. So God, use me for your glory that your that these words that come through me, God, goes and penetrates the heart of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, we're going to get right into it. <clears throat> Melissa, you can put my topic up today. So today my topic is break the glass ceiling. Break the glass ceiling. So when people say a glass ceiling, they are talking about an invisible barrier that present that prevents prevents them from obtaining success. A lot of times people think once you hit a certain level, you've made it or you, you are now an accomplished. But to be honest, that's not really true. You ever prayed for a job? And I know everybody may have been here by now. You ever prayed for a job and asked for a certain position or a certain salary? You got it. You worked it. Then all of a sudden you're like, what's next? You ever felt like that? I'm tired of this. Like, what else do you got for me? So we've all have been there. So and once you got everything, it's like there has to be more. So breaking the glass ceiling is usually associated with success. But today, you know, I'm not going to be here talking about no success. Today, I want to talk about it from a spiritual perspective. So the glass barrier that I'm talking about is something that the enemy has put in front of you that is designed to make you believe that you can't obtain spiritual success or that you cannot that you cannot have access to the promises of God because he wants you to believe you have already reached the limit. Not true. Y'all know he get on my nerves, right? So you can literally, if you think about the Bible, you could literally pick so many people from the Bible to find out, to find that they all have had a glass ceiling somewhere, something that prevented them from doing God's work or was trying to stop them from reaching and doing what God had called them to do. We can look at Moses. Moses stuttered. I feel like I was like Moses. Pick somebody else. I did the meme. I'm going to show y'all this meme I did. But Moses stuttered and had a nerve to ask God to pick somebody else. So send somebody else. This sounds just like me. So I have a meme I created it like two weeks ago. So this is not my voice, but this is me. Most of y'all already had it, already probably texted it to y'all, but imagine Moses saying this. Melissa, put that up for me. Hold on. Nomination. Pick somebody else. Pick somebody else. I don't, I'm not, I'm not addressing this crowd right now. Please pick somebody else. I'm at a 10. I'm out of 10. Please pick somebody else. Okay, stay right there, Melissa. I want y'all to listen. <laughs> I want y'all to listen to when the voice starts coming on. Somebody is actually talking and she cuts him off. This is not my voice, but imagine God picking Moses. Hey, Moses, I need you to lead the Israelites. Press, press play one more time, Melissa. Pick somebody else. Pick somebody else. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not addressing this crowd right now. Please pick somebody else. I'm out of 10. I'm at a 10. Please pick somebody else. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Imagine Moses was like, man, pick somebody else. It sounds so much like me. And I, I laughed when I saw it. I'm like, Melissa, you got to put this meme up for me today. Or let's take a look at Gideon. He felt like he was the most ill-equipped person to defeat the Midianites. And he did it because he had to break through some ceilings to get there. How about Zechariah? Everybody knows the story of Zechariah and, and his wife thinking that they were too old to birth John the Baptist. Everybody knows that's John the, look, everybody do know that's John the Baptist's parents, right? Right? But he was in such disbelief of what God called him to be and to do that God had to mute his mouth until the promises came forward. Do y'all remember the story? Everybody like, hey, hey. listen, and guess what? The same goes for us. We all have something that is a glass ceiling. I could put my life on it that everyone here on this Zoom, including me, have problems right now that hinders their walk and service to God. Everybody. 
what are some examples? Remember I said a glass ceiling was an invisible barrier that prevent, prevents you from spiritual success. Let's look at it like procrastination. How many people procrastinate? God told you to do something years ago. You still procrastinating because I, you know, I had other stuff to do with my kids. I had all this stuff. Procrastination. How about being too sensitive? Sometimes people are too sensitive. They can't get past their sensitivity to do God's work. This is one that drives me nuts. Wasting time. I cannot stand for my time to be wasted. When you, when you get to a, a level mentally, you hate when people devalue your time. How about this one? Mind you, I'm telling you all of the stuff I preached about in the last two years, not knowing who you are, not spending the time to get to find out who God has called you to be. These are all like glass ceilings that stop you. What about listening and believing the enemy with his nonsense? He get on my nerve. But if you think about this procrastination, sensitivity, think about everything, anxiety, how about you could unmute yourself and tell me some things that the enemy or that's a glass ceiling. Don't forget the things that I'm telling you, they're invisible. Procrastination, I can't see it. Time, I can't see it. Not knowing myself, I can't see that. You can't see none of these because, um, you can't see none of these because physic you can't see any of these physically, but these are just some things that will stop you from accomplishing. So can anybody unmute themselves and tell me more examples of what a glass ceiling may look like to you or that you encountered? Lies. Hearing from the enemy, telling him, you know, telling us lies about ourselves. All day. Anybody yeah. else? Thank you, Nita. Distractions. All day. Overthinking. Idolatry. Idolatry. Focusing. Ooh, idolatry and is good. Looking, looking too hard to, away from God. Mm. Over Mina, you said something? Overthinking. A hundred percent. Mm. Ashley G, distractions is number one on the list, 100%. How about, how about this? Did you even think about this? When you resist God's plan for you, not because the plan was small, but you put up a glass ceiling because you thought his dream was too big for you. How about that? Oh, I look at me. I, this is too much. I don't want to be, pick somebody else. Pick, I'm out of 10. Pick somebody else. That's me. Sometimes I said they could be invisible, but sometimes your glass ceiling could be a person or it could be the greed of material wealth that's holding you back. What makes it invisible is that the enemy is blinding you from recognizing it. So you can't see it anyway. In order to see the glass ceiling, it takes some work. There comes a time when you are required to move. I, all of this stuff that you hear me say, I've preached this for the last two years, but there was a reason. I've been preaching this and now God has revealed it's been, I, I preached it to you because the time has come. I was prepping you all along. So during the prepping season, you were supposed to be doing the work. Now let's check this out. Let's look at Abraham as an example of somebody breaking through his ceiling. There are steps to breaking the glass ceiling. Let's take a look. Genesis chapter 12, verses one to five, the NIV version. There's a whole process to this breaking the ceiling. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you how. Verse one, the Lord said to Abram, go. Remember, I said you're required to move. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Listen, my boy had to leave. My, you have to leave your country. You have to leave your people. And you have to leave your daddy. I know what that feels like, obedience, but it required him to move. A lot of people not realizing the glass ceiling is how many people has God given instructions to and they don't move. He's given this man a straight instruction, but just because he gave him an, an instruction to move, you don't think he didn't feel no pain? I'm leaving my country. That means I'm going somewhere. These people don't speak what I speak. These people don't know me from a can of paint. I'm leaving my father. Please, you don't think they felt pain? The Bible didn't discuss that. Imagine if it did. The Bible would, would be so thick, we wouldn't be able to carry it if it talked about everybody's pain. Think about it. So let's go. He had to, um, This is, and now we're going to read in the second verse why it was necessary for him to go. He had to go because there was a promise. 
God said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. Think about breaking your ceiling. There's a promise beyond the ceiling. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Think about TG in itself, our church. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will bless, put it back up, uh, Melissa, and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Verse three, I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. He had to break beyond his glass ceiling because there was promises there waiting on him. And all the people, peoples on earth will be blessed through you. We got an assignment. So verse four, so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with them. Lot was his nephew. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran or Haran. Verse five, he took his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Listen, I don't really have to go through the whole book of Genesis. Everybody knows the story of Abraham. But I want you to keep in your mind that picture of the glass ceiling that you got to break, that he had to break as Abraham. On his journey, God tells you to get up, go, leave your family, leave your country, leave your daddy, go do what I tell you. Obedience, number one, in order to break that glass ceiling, you better hear his voice and be obedient. But the only way you can do that is by relationship. Amina just said that. You must have a relationship. Think about Abraham's story. You know it already. He gave up everything in obedience. And while he was on his journey, he still had to break more glass ceilings. Listen, in order to get what God had promised him, he had to keep breaking through. He had to move to do the work. And, the, and you are required to move. And then think about it. He had to leave everybody. Everybody can't go. Everybody, when you go into bust the ceiling open, everybody's not meant to go with you. That means get rid of the attachments. Y'all checking out the process here? It's not just being obedient, going, making that move. You're required to move. But there's some requirements on the way, some glass ceilings you got to crack. Get rid of your attachments. Think about it. On his journey, he had to lie about Sarah being his wife because there was a famine in Egypt. I can't go too deep because I'll be stuck on here. Then he had to separate from his nephew, Lot, because their possessions were so great that the land couldn't even hold them jokers. So they had to split. Where do you think Lot went? He, he said, Pick which way you want to go, nephew? Oh, yeah, I want to go to Sodom. I want to go to Sodom because they got water and stuff there. They got water that's going to bring, it's, it's going to be wealthy over there. Go ahead. And we all know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. So think about this. And so Abraham asked God, man, you're giving me all of this stuff. I don't got nobody to leave this stuff to. So God said, chill out. I promise you, you break through this next glass. I got a promise seed through your own flesh that I'm going to give to you. These promises, these are the promises that you get when you break your glass. I will give you everything. The catch is be obedient, right? And now think about it. He gets the promise seed. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. I got the promise seed because I'm being obedient. You know, left everybody. And now you telling me, here's another ceiling. I got to sacrifice my only seed. Are you kidding me? This is, I got, yo, I don't have, what do you mean? Now you got to go and sacrifice your son. Could you imagine what he was thinking? The Bible won't tell his feelings. Because your feelings don't matter. You okay. must do the work and break through the ceiling. You think, Listen, as a widow, uh, uh, okay, when you're done, I got work for you to do. Stop being attached to that mess and let's go. In the Bible, what did he say? Let the, bear, let the dead bury the dead. We got work to do, right? So these are all ceilings for him that he had to break in order to get to the promise. Last week at the TD Jakes conference, the leadership conference, he said, you cannot become what you cannot see. Here's the thing about a glass ceiling. You can actually see it. It's glass. You can see Oh man, in order for me to get that, I got to break through the ceiling to get what's next. And yes, I don't care what nobody say. Oh, it's just a glass. You will get cut, period. You're going to get cut. 
You are going to feel pain. Who told you you were excluded from being cut and you were going to feel pain? And yes, you will have bruises, but the main thing is that you broke the glass to get to the promise. That's what's important. You have to break the glass ceiling. And today I'm giving everybody an imaginary tool. I'm giving everybody in here a hammer, an imaginary hammer. So when you get up there, you better bust that glass open. And I'm talking about busting it open, busting through your stronghold, busting through your soul ties, anxiety, depression. Let's break the ceiling. Let's break this glass ceiling because there are promises that God has for us beyond the breaking. When your eyes are finally open to see past that glass, that's when you become real dangerous. You become real dangerous because now ain't, there's nothing that's going to stop you. You don't crack the glass and you peeping around and you see what's up here like, hold up. Nothing can stop you. You will become eager to keep breaking the glass because I now could see my promises. Oh, wow. Now I can see my promises. You know what? I had to give up everything. I think it's funny. I was saying it cost me everything. And the girl thought I was talking about my husband. I said, yo, chick, my husband dying was actually the reward. This calling cost me everything. It cost me my reasonings. It cost me my dreams of whatever I had at my childhood dreams. It cost me my attachments from you, from my own children. It cost me everything, every thought I wanted to be, everything I wanted to do. Listen, I said Friday, hey, how about we take a month off because it's summer and I had to retract. I can't even tell you that because I have to go to the father to make sure he wants that for TG. Did y'all hear me Friday? We don't, I don't even have that option. It costs everything. You're not in charge. You're not in control. But I bet you one thing, you're going to see this girl break past every ceiling that come forth because I know that there's promises beyond. I tapped into it already. And I know that all of these ceilings were built to stop me. And TG is unstoppable. Unstoppable. And if you're sitting here on this Zoom thinking I'm talking about materialistic mess, you might want to hit that uh, end button on the Zoom right now because you ain't getting it, 100%. I'm not talking about nothing materialistic, none of that garbage. I'm talking about breaking glass ceiling, getting rid of your traumas, getting rid of garbage that the enemy want to lay and weigh you down with. Break past the ceiling. Use your hammer. I am giving you a hammer today. I told you guys Friday. I said, don't sleep. It's funny that um, Michelle said, that she had a word. I just said that Friday. Hey, during the season, the summer sleep, this season, everybody's sleeping, they're feeling good, the weather coming down, everybody's showing a little skin, but you're forgetting about your daddy. You're forgetting about why you were sent to earth. What are you sent here to do? Don't forget about your kingdom building that we're on a journey. We're forgetting, we're forgetting. God is not gonna keep giving me messages to tell you to do more and to break the glass ceiling. Listen, there's a promise. We got to get it, but it takes a team. So don't let all of this summer stuff sidetrack you or you not realizing the stuff that you're doing is not beneficial to your spiritual life. This week we have a fast and I want everybody in here to use the power. I told you TG was in a season of power because that's what God told me to tell you. Let's use it. We need a building. Are we tapping into our power? Bump that. This week, we're fasting from six to three every single day, no food. This is what we're going to do. We're going to fast every day this week from Monday to Friday, six to three, no food. And we're all praying on one accord for a building. So Michelle was right on point because I have it right here. And I want you to, while you're praying and while we use use your power and this hammer that I'm giving you today, bust that ceiling open, all of us. We need our stuff to come down. You don't be diligent and do all your work to get nothing. Man, listen, I say this all the time. I wouldn't serve a guy who wouldn't bless me. I'm sorry. Call me crazy. I'm bold enough to tell you the truth because I know my daddy blesses me every time and he blesses you. So listen, let's get on the ball from six to three, Monday to Friday. Get rid of everything that is not conducive to your spiritual growth. Use your power and we're going to pray for a new church. I want to see a miracle. I want God to bless us with a miracle, but we got to join together and bust this glass. Listen. Breaking the glass is not going to kill us. It's just going to cut you. But we're going to be all right. Our individual walk, right? Everybody must have an individual walk. And I'm telling you this. When we first started the church, I told everybody every week, 
what we needed to do. Get yourself right. Find God. Stop wasting time. Don't procrastinate. Be on alert. We, I, every week, I could go back to all the messages, and I'm still saying the same messages. Find thyself. Know thyself. Make a relationship. Y'all know I'm not lying. I done said this over and over. Now the time has come for kingdom building. And now you've done the individual work. It requires a team. Don't be on my team if you ain't do the work. I can tell you that now because what's going to happen? Now we all need to break the ceiling because we all need something. We all need this building because we got to transform a generation. We was called. Everybody is here because of obedience, not by chance. Now we need to bust our, break our ceiling open, break our glass ceiling, but we need a team. The problem is the team is going to detect the weakness 100%. You ever did team projects at work? Mm -hmm. You ever did team projects? And the person who's sitting over there complaining, everybody like, they got to go. They got to go. They're making the job harder for us. They're making the weight harder. You're going to have to drop off because we are kingdom building right now. There is no time for people to be complaining. That you should have been doing the work while everybody was doing the work. Time is up. Time is up for us to stop playing. Time is up for the enemy and his nonsense because he thinks he's winning. And he, the, we read the story to end. You lost, Joker. It's over. I don't know if I told y'all today, but he got on my nerve, my last nerve. Y'all can feel his heat coming out of my, I want to slap him to sleep. Ooh, I want to slap him to sleep. He get on my nerve. But you can get on my nerve all you want because this girl is going to wake up every day. This kingdom woman is going to wake up every day to do God's work because I want to break through ceilings. And I Amen. want anybody who's under TG to break these ceilings, not just for yourself, but for each other. We have work to do. Let's, and I'm telling you, if you have not done the work in this time, I feel bad. Ain't nothing we can do. <clears throat> Ain't nothing nobody can help. Catch up. But I'm telling you, the team will detect the weakness and nobody's going to be able to carry your load and theirs. I told you while we were on a journey. Hey, we'll help you. Remember that, Bernice? I said, pick up the brick in your backpack. We'll help carry it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I've been saying this. It ain't gonna be no more else to say. The time has come. We must do the work. And for those who are working and not working, don't be weary and well-doing. We gotta break this glass because you, uh, you gotta reap the benefits of the promise. We can't get tired now. We yeah. gotta promise through that glass and it's clear as day, everything that's waiting on the other side of us. Don't let this setback trick you because this setback is a setup. We about to blow up. Don't get the game twisted. Man, this amen. setup is not real. It's, if you think this setup or a setback, we're about to blow up. And if you ain't ready for it, and I ain't talking about ready financial. God got all that. He, he's showing out. He is showing out. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about your spirit ain't right. If we can't touch people and heal them, if we're not helping people, People are dying every day because the church can't get to them. They don't have no hope. They don't have a savior. And we like this. I'm going to the beach Saturday. I got, I'm going to the beach. It's going to be nice. Really? That must be nice. Well, good. I hope you enjoy it. I'm not saying not to go and have fun. Enjoy yourself. But to me, rest is for people who work. Rest oh. is for people who are tired, who needs a rest. Jesus, God rested himself. But if you ain't doing, Jack, what are you sleeping for? Wake up. We have work to do. It is time to pull out that hammer. I don't know about y'all jokers, but I'm pulling out two hammers. I want my arms to be tired. When I get home, God, my arms is on fire because I was breaking through the glass to get to you. I was breaking through the glass to see you. I was breaking through, my boy, and I'm here. I made it. I made it to the other side. Come on. Enough is enough. Let's get to it. Don't let this mess fool you. How in the world do we lose a church? We didn't really lose anything. How in the world did this guy not pay the bills and we don't owe nothing? There's no contract. Amen. The man didn't even know my last name for two years. Do you not see what our father is doing? He's setting us up to blow us up. And he has, listen, his word already went forth. If you obey and do what I tell you to do, you watch what I do. I'm telling you, we are destined, destined for greatness, destined to do God's will. But if you're not on one accord and if you're not following the plan that God has given to me to give to you, you are going to be left back. 
You are going to be stuck. And I promise you, it's not going to feel good to you. It's not. We got work to do. And I'm talking about spiritual work. Again, if you think I'm talking about materialistic nonsense and garbage, it's an end button right in your right hand corner. Just get off. Because you ain't taking, you ain't getting it. Please. So look how I'm screaming. I got to be a lady, Lamar. I'm trying to be nice. But I know what God tells me because the enemy, he get on my nerve. I'm, I'm tired of him. I'm tired of him messing with people's kids. I'm tired of him messing with people's money. I'm tired of him messing with people's spirit. I've had enough. Now I'm no longer carrying a pocketbook. I'm, I'm carrying a hammer because I'm sick of his mess. I want to break through these ceilings and I hope that y'all are doing and pack some hammers in your pocketbook. Put some hammers in your backpack and let's break through the ceiling. We don't have no time. People need what we got. And I told God, if you send me, I'll go. I'll go all across the world. Because now I done did the work. When I was at uh, ILS, I was praying. I said, oh, I'm crying. A mess. I'm crying. I said, God, thank you for introducing me to Thumbelina. Never met her before. Never met her before. Y'all might think that's crazy. I never met her. God, I thank you. 2022, you introduced me to Thumbelina. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I'll do anything for your glory. Thank you for showing me me. Thank you for giving me light. You know what he said? No. Clear as day. He said, thank you for doing the work in your obedience. I bawled. I was bawling so hard like this. My girlfriend was just rubbing my back. She had no clue what was going on between me and me. I was like, here I am. I forgot that I even put the work in. Because I wasn't looking for the work. I was looking for the results. I need to see my daddy. I need to get this job done. There, there's a goal here. There's a promise. If I live for you, I get eternal life. Nah, bruh. I'm busting through. With or without you. I told y'all from the rip. It's go time. I'm hungry. The world will hear my story. I'm going to get ready to tell everybody. I get to tell everybody about my insecurities because I've been free from them. You know why? Because I put in the work. I'm excited about this thing. Let me tell you. I thought this, this walk with God was such a burden. Becoming a pastor was such a burden. And I kept saying, take the burden off and make it a delight. Make it a delight. And guess what? Today, I delight in being a pastor. Woo! I delight. Amen. I delight. Amen. I delight. Amen. You know Amen. how long that took me? You know the cost? You know how many nights I slept in that bed? You know how many shower cries I done had? It's time to break through the ceiling. And I'm encouraging you because I'm encouraging myself. I'm hungry. I'm a big girl. I need to stop saying I'm hungry. I, you be eating a lot. You need to fast, sis. You really do. But I'm hungry. I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry for knowledge. I'm hungry. I'm hungry to tell the world my story. God has blessed me to be able to talk to entrepreneurs, to other pastors, to widows, to teen moms. How blessed am I that you gave me all of this and I was about to reject it all because of what I wanted until I finally surrendered totally. It's not about me. What do you want? I'm busting through these ceilings. I'm tired of it. Glass, box, brick. I'm busting through it. I got hammers. If anybody wants some stop by the house, I got them. I got hammers. It's time. Let's go and break these glass ceilings. Let me be a lady because I'm excited. I'm excited. In my conclusion, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what is your glass ceiling? What is your glass ceiling? What is that invisible barrier? that's stopping you from spiritual success? Is it laziness? Is it procrastination? Is it another person? Is it greed for material stuff, anything else other than God? Is it not believing in your call because it's bigger than you? If he called you to it, he's already equipped you for it. What is it? What is your glass ceiling? And how many glass ceilings do you really have? Did you put them there? Did the enemy put them there? Honestly, ask yourself, what is my glass ceiling? And I bet you, the minute I asked you the question, most of y'all knew what the answers were. You knew what the answers were. Because in your mind, you like, I know. I hear her. I got to stop. I got to. I already can feel it. I know. I know I, gotta, I know I could do more. You know if you're not doing enough. Nobody don't have to come up here to tell you, you um, Sister Tanji over there ain't doing nothing. Mind your business and worry about what you're doing. Mind your business was one of the subjects I had before too. Mind your business. Worry about yourself. What have you done? A girl said to me, 
uh, last week, she said, listen, if it's not in the Bible, I can't hear it. If it's not, I said, I wanted to walk away and be like, I knew the answer, right. but I couldn't. I said, sometimes things in the Bible, they're in there, but you misinterpret it wrong because your mind is so finite and you're thinking God only has one way in his word. Are you bonkers? You don't know who he is. But you know how many scriptures are in the Bible? Take one scripture has 12,000 meanings. But you say, if it don't say this, it ain't a God. Girl, if you don't get your small minded self from away from me and open your mind, open your, and open your relationship to God because he's bigger than that. Listen, before I actually knew the Bible, this is a true story. I love this. I get to be free to tell you my stories. This is amazing. Before I even knew all of the Bible or studied the word of God, my relationship with God kept telling me stuff. And all of a sudden I would read the word like, huh, it's actually in the Bible. Get out of here. Had no clue. But my relationship was so important that he was already feeding me and filling me with his presence, with his word. So when I got to the actual Bible, it was just confirmation. Who does this? This is amazing. Can y'all see the excitement on my face? Look. I'm not, I'm not frozen. I'm excited. I can't I'm so it. excited. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I done tapped into something. I done tapped into something. I already was going somewhere. I done tapped into something and time is up. I'm hungry. I'm breaking these ceilings because I want to make sure that we accomplish God's uh, calling for TG. He has called us to transform a generation and he has given us two and a half years to get ourselves together to get ourselves together to go out there to do God's work. What's your, what's your glass ceiling look like? Do you think this little hammer I'm giving you is going to help you? Because the hammer ain't going to do nothing if you don't move. You are required to move. Abraham, get up, go leave your family, leave your daddy and leave your country. He can't break through no ceilings. The first step was for you to move. God is telling you to do something. Listen, some people in this church are not supposed to be here. Do what you got to do. I'm, I can promise you I'm not attached because I understand. And let me tell you something about going on. You always hear me say, I got to go. I got to go. Let me in, let you in on a little secret about me. One thing about my life and my journey with God, he has always moved me. And I, I could prove it through every job I've had to the end result. He was building me the whole time to be a boss and boom, because I did the work. I had to leave my daddy. Oh, they was devastated in pain. I get to the next place. I had to leave that place. This is my pattern in, in, in my life through God. You must go because I'm hungry. I'm crying out. If you send me, I go. That's how I know I got to go before TG to go pave the way. I have to. What are we going to do while you're sitting here? If I'm going out into the world, bringing them in, what is TG doing? We got work to do. How are we keeping them? What about our children? What are we doing? God's patterning with Thumbelina's life is she moves. She moves. But she don't just move without God. She has to do the work. You don't just get the results without putting in work. People always say, what the heck is the work? Move and find out. When you move, you get instruction. That's why he said, let me look back at the scripture. He said, Go out of the country, leave your people and your dad, right? Leave your father's house to the land. Look at this. I will show you. The first step is get out, move. Oh, when, I was, I can't, when, when I move, what, what's next? Calm down, take it from 25 and go down to three. Just bring it down because you got to wait to get there. Now, the reason why most people don't move because they're thinking if we move me here, if we move it, shh, be quiet, just move. Do what you're supposed to do. That's the work. That's the work. Sitting in silence. Be still. Be still and know. We rip and run. We got to go to the store. I got to do this. I got to sit down. Have you heard his voice? What are we supposed to be doing? What is your glass ceiling? Remember, today you were equipped with a hammer. You already had power. Use both of them at the same time. And let's break this glass ceiling and go for it. So today, I hope you are encouraged by our word, by the word of God. I hope that you feel inspired and encouraged to break this glass ceiling. It is imperative. If we are going to kingdom build together, 
we must all be on one accord starting this week. We got to be on one accord to fast, to pray. Let's all pray for the same thing. Let's, and if the social media bothers you, take it off. Get rid of it this week. Whatever it is, if it's being on the phone, put it on D&D. Do not disturb. Cut it off. Anything that does not, that is not conducive to your spiritual growth. Pull out your scissors this week. Cut that mess off. And then once you put the scissors down, go back into your toolbox or your tool belt and pick up that hammer and break the ceiling open. We need a building because it's not, if the building is not for us. We've already proven TG don't need a building. Financially, physically, spiritually, nothing. We don't need a building. It's the people outwards that need us. They need this hugs. They need the love that we got to offer. This week, let's break the ceiling together. Let's go ham. Let's go in. Let's go in and say, God, we need a building. We need some. Matter of fact, give us a miracle. Blow our minds. You got it. Show us some more. I want more. I want more. I want to see. I want to see all that you got. I want to see you do something crazy. You're crazy. Do it. I dare you. Triple, double dare you. Do it. And I ain't going to stop till I see you do it. Let's break this glass. Is everybody good with that?